When central banks raise interest rates, it's big news. Bankers judging that the only way they can try to pull down inflation is to carry on raising interest rates. We're gonna see rising rates. Rising interest rates that will make the cost of borrowing go up. It can send ripples across the whole economy. It can sink consumer confidence, result in fewer jobs and lower wages, and cause stock prices to fall. If they go too far too fast, it can tip economies into recession. So why do central banks raise interest rates? Let's start with the basics. If you borrow money, you'll have to pay back a little extra to make it worthwhile for the lender. Well, I think we can make you this long. You have a good reputation. We know you're reliable. I'm glad you think so. This is the interest rate. So if you are taking out a loan, you want the interest rate to be as low as possible so you don't have to pay that much back. On the flip side, if you want to save money, then a high interest rate means you can earn more on your savings. See it as a reward for leaving money in your account. But the size of your reward depends on the circumstances. There's no single interest rate in the economy. You've got thousands of banks setting their own commercial rates. That's all influenced, though, by the interest rate that the central bank sets. A central bank is like a bank for banks. Just like you and your savings account, banks also earn interest when they leave money with a central bank. Commercial banks have these things called reserves. So that's a bit like their cash on hand. Commercial banks lend those excess reserves to each other at an interest rate, and they also can deposit their excess reserves at the central bank. And when they do that, they can earn an interest rate. Ordinary people can't access the interest rate on the excess reserves, but it still affects them. And that's the idea. When central banks raise interest rates, they're trying to control inflation, how fast prices rise for everyone. They were 129, now they want 39, and that's in the space of four weeks. Central banks like the Fed or the Bank of England or the European Central Bank are all trying to hit an inflation target of 2%. Interest rates are a really powerful tool that they have to do that. If inflation is seen as too high, that's when banks raise interest rates. The change spreads through the financial system and slows down the rate of inflation. Here's how. A rise in interest rates from a central bank means that a commercial bank will earn more on their reserves. They might make more from keeping their money in a central bank than lending it out. So if they do lend it out, they'll raise their interest rates to make it worth their while. How that affects consumers depends on the economy. Take mortgages. In places like Finland or Australia, lots of people have mortgages with variable interest rates. If you've got a variable rate mortgage where the interest rate that you pay is linked to the central bank's interest rate, then higher interest rates mean that essentially immediately the higher rate will translate into less cash to spend on other things. Less spare cash means households will spend less. And less spending means businesses will be warier of raising prices. This should lower inflation. In other countries, like America or Canada, a bigger share of mortgages are set at fixed rates. People with fixed rates are protected against the direct effects of an interest rate rise, but will still feel an indirect impact. Higher interest rates mean that mortgages will become more expensive. If that is affecting all new buyers, then house prices will begin to fall. And that will make everyone who owns a home feel poorer, and therefore they might spend less. Lower spending will translate into lower inflation. And it's not just consumers who will tighten the purse strings. When interest rates rise, then businesses will find it more expensive to borrow and invest. That generally means less economic activity. It might mean fewer jobs are created. Fewer jobs and lower wages could mean less money for households. And consumer confidence might suffer, which also means less spending. 
People are grappling with a decline in real wages, meaning their money buys less. When interest rates rise, that will tend to slow down spending, investment, and generally depress economic activity. Overall, that will make businesses more reluctant to raise their prices, uh, and that will tend to pull back inflation. It sounds straightforward, right? But the trick is judging how far to go. In 1981, the Federal Reserve, America's central bank, allowed interest rates to rise to a whopping 19%. The move curbed inflation, but it led to widespread economic pain. I regret to say that we're in the worst economic mess since the Great Depression. It is very difficult to get inflation under control without severely denting economic activity. In America, it's been over 70 years since they've managed to get inflation down from over 5% without causing a recession. A little inflation is okay. It keeps the economy moving at a sensible speed. But inflation staying high for too long is a problem. Higher prices means employees will need higher wages, pushing up costs for businesses. That could drive up prices further, potentially leading to an upward spiral of wages and prices. Retail inflation in India has surged to 7.8%. The combination of tepid economic activity and high inflation poses serious challenges for Indian economy going forward. Central bankers are really concerned about setting expectations of inflation. The idea is that if it can show that it is credible, that it will always act to get inflation back down to 2%, then maybe it won't have to you know, raise interest rates and then lower them in this kind of seesaw fashion. Raising interest rates can slow an economy right down. The trouble is, the brake pedal has a delay. It can take as long as two years to see the full results from interest rate changes. Central banks know this, so when they set interest rates, they're actually trying to read the road ahead. But predicting the future isn't easy. The problem is it's difficult for the central bank to work out whether the inflation will fall back on its own. And even when central banks do get it right, they might still cause a crash. It may be a blunt instrument, but raising interest rates is still central banks' main tool for taming inflation. Central bankers would say that yes, raising interest rates can be painful. Slowing down the economy is not fun, but it's worth it. It's worth it to get low and steady inflation so that in the long run, you don't have to think about it. Thank you for watching. To read more of our coverage on interest rates, click the link. And don't forget to subscribe.